Hello everyone, this is Caleb Simpson here from ZeldaDungeon.net, and you are watching our video walkthrough for The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. This is chapter 11, which is by far the longest chapter in the walkthrough, running a little over an hour and 40 minutes, and is broken up into 11 videos. The first three videos will encompass our journey to the Sacred Grove, which is all that's really necessary to do within this chapter. The other eight videos will cover a lot of side quests and getting new items, and heart pieces, and a new collectible item we will shortly be eligible for called Postals, and we'll actually be getting like half of the Postals in the entire game, so that's most of what this chapter is. So if you are just trying to do the main quest stuff, you can just watch the first three videos and you can skip ahead to the next chapter, because all the rest of that is just optional stuff. So we've just completed the Lake Bed Temple, and we have gathered the final piece of the Fused Shadow, after which we were confronted by Zant back in the Lanayru Spring. There's a lot of interesting dialogue that takes place in that cutscene, and because it was just so intense and everything, it just felt right to just leave it without commentary. So, now Link is trapped in wolf form, and Minda is sick, I guess, and the only one who can really help is Princess Zelda. You want to make your way back towards Hyrule Castle, because that's what Lanero told us to do, and uh, as you might already guess, we can't actually enter Hyrule Castle from the front and everything, especially as a wolf, so we're going to have to figure out how to get back there. Now Minda can't teleport us there and everything, so... Now, if you remember from several chapters back, Telma actually told us that her bar had a secret passageway that leads to Hyrule Castle. So you want to head over to Telma's bar. And also, if you are not sure what to do, you can always chat with the local cats and dogs that are within Castletown, who will all mention something about Telma's bar. Also, notice that now that you are in wolf form, but we are still in the world of light, then if you pass by people, uh, they will actually be scared of you because you are a wolf. Once you finally make it all the way to Thomas Bar, you want to push through the door which is held open just a little bit. It sure is convenient how the doors just happen to be that way whenever we're a wolf, huh? 
Unfortunately, someone will toss you out because you're a beast and then will slam the door shut behind you. It's unclear whether it's Telma or one of the others inside, but it doesn't really matter, I guess. As you try to leave, you'll be called out to by Telma's cat, Louise, who hops down to say hello. Because she's an animal, we can now chat with other animals when we're in wolf form, so you can now talk to her. Nifty! We actually saw her a few times earlier when we were talking with Telma in her bar, and you can pet Louise and such uh, when you were in your Hylian form, so she'll like meow at you. <laughs> anyway, the white fluff ball apparently sniffs you out, and she can recognize you, so I guess our scent doesn't really change much between Hylian and wolf form, even though at the moment we probably stink like dog, considering it's raining and all. <laughs> So, Louise goes on to officially introduce herself, and she explains that she's a bit puzzled at our current appearance. She looks at Midna and just assumes that she's another patient, and uh, she will then, Midna will then ask for help and says Princess Zelda's name. After a few moments of considering, Louise will gesture towards the window that she came out of and explain that it leads to the attic, and eventually an old, attic, uh, an old waterway that goes under Hyrule Castle itself. This is where we need to go, so that's pretty cool. She also warns you to be careful to make sure that the humans inside don't notice you, because if they do, they'll toss you out and you have to start all over again. Once you regain control of Link, you simply want to grab the crate that is nearby and push it up against the side of the other crates. From here, we'll be able to climb up and enter the attic of Telfer's Bar. So once you make it inside, you'll see a short scene showing off the room, which has tons of ropes strung across the various stone shelving I guess it's supposed to be. There's tons of jars along these edges here, and I don't know why there's so many. Maybe they're decorative, but there's nothing inside them. You can smash them and they're all empty, but so why does Tell Me have so many? Maybe they're just decorative? Start tightroping tight across, and you can press A to listen in on the people below. The first person you come to is a Goron who mutters to himself about the elders ordering him to escort Telma back to Castletown. I don't know why he's still here, maybe he's just waiting for it to stop raining? Once you get to Telma, you can listen in on her, and she's talking about monsters in the streets. I guess she's referring to Link, because I haven't heard of any other monsters in Castletown. She goes on to say that the Gorons are much more reliable than the soldiers are. Who'd have thought? After that, you want to get onto the next ledge where we have our first jars to deal with. You have two chances to knock them off. If you hit one off, then they get suspicious. If you knock two off, then they will notice you and toss you out again. So you have to try all over again. So try not to knock any down, and you'll be fine. You can pick them up using your mouth, and you can set them elsewhere, but I think it's easier to just squeeze by really carefully. Once you get to the three people at the table, you can listen in on them as well. Uh, this is actually the resistance group that Talma was telling you about earlier, and we will be meeting up with them fairly soon. You want to climb up to the next ledge and uh, you'll enter the next passageway, which actually leads right inside someone's house. Odd. <laughs> this room is filled with gold and such, but you'll see there's a blue lantern off to the side. You may have seen these throughout Hyrule at night thus far, but we couldn't really do anything with them at the time. Use your senses to see the impo, and then use A to attack it. Uh, we can't have, we can't use Midna's charge attack at the moment since she's out of commission. But once you have smacked the Poe twice, it will fall to the ground. So press A one last time while you're targeting it to finish it, causing Link to rip an orb out of its chest, and which is our first pulsol. The statue nearby will then speak to you and introduces himself as Giovanni. He calls you Doggy and explains that his soul was sold to a dark creature who did this to him. I assume that he did this so he could become rich which would explain why he's a solid gold statue surrounded by more gold. Anyways, he complains that he can't see his girlfriend and that his cat is frozen to his head. He goes on to ask you to collect 20 pulse souls and break the curse. So there's actually 60 in total, and I will be collecting them throughout this walkthrough. With that, he offers you a passageway to the castle, so you want to hop down inside the treasure chest to access the waterway. Now, how does that make any sense? 